removing collection charge-offs off of your credit reports. I'm going to go over exactly how you can remove collection charge-offs off of your credit reports. And you can do this within two to four weeks using the process that I'm going to talk about. So num first, I understand that you want something that is concrete. You want you something that is not this wishy-washy stuff that you see all over the internet. You want true information. You don't want to be led all over the place trying to do things that don't work. You don't have time for that. You want to get your lifestyle upgraded. You don't want any surprises. You don't want people knocking on your doors talking about you're being sued. You don't want disruptions with your life. You want to be able to move forward having the credit that you deserve. And if you've made some mistakes in the past, you want to be able to have a solid solution to overcome those problems. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. And the number one problem that we see is people having charge offs on their credit reports that were sold to debt collectors. Like that is the number one credit uh, issue that people are dealing with in the United States. Now, just so you know who I am and why you should believe what I say, but I, what I want you to do is to test. I'm not trying to convince you of anything is that I've helped over uh, 10,000 direct customers with my Return company and over a hundred thousand uh, uh, people who have reviewed my information here on YouTube and used it and they have either wrote reviews or they wrote in the comments saying that Steve what you said absolutely works and I know it works because I see the results of it from my clients every day uh, that we work with so now what I want you to understand is that there's if, if we were to look at it there's actually two sides to your credit one side is actually the stuff that you do, the history, the payments, type of accounts, uh, the amounts that you're utilizing on your credit. That's that's one side. There's another side to your credit that that has it, it's it's about the procedures. It's about how the information was put on your credit reports. It's about how it is uh, was it accurately uh, reported. So there's like two sides. So you could have actually something that is 100% yours, that's on your credit reports, that's, you know, you got the loan, you had the credit. But because the procedures were not followed, that information has to come off of your credit reports if you choose for it to come off. And that goes for negative accounts, that goes for positive accounts. And this is something that a lot of people kind of, I think, have misconceptions about because they mostly focus on getting negative information removed off their credit reports and they don't never think about it as a procedural type of uh, uh, they don't never talk about think about the procedures on how that information was placed on the credit reports so let's go through the procedures under the fair credit reporting act the fcra creditors debt collectors and other furnishers of credit information are required to report information accurately to the credit reporting agencies, the CRAs. And in this video, I'm going to talk about specifically what they have to do, the procedures and how they have to do it. And if you look at your credit reports, even if the information is yours, you will be able to see how you can get information removed based off of what I'm about to tell you right here so uh 15 us us code 1681 s-2 responsibilities of furnishers of information so remember we're talking about the process of putting that information on your credit reports what they furnishers creditors debt collectors and other furnishers the process that they have to follow to even put that information on your credit reports. So now, this is the most this is the most relevant information for accurate reporting. It outlines the duties of ent entities that provide information to credit bureaus and mandates that they must ensure the information they report is accurate 
and correct and correct errors when they arise. So if you ever say, hey, something is wrong, you need to correct it. So let's move forward. Duties to provide accurate information. Furnishers must not report information they know or have reasonable cause to believe is inaccurate. This section also requires furnishers to correct any incomplete or inaccurate information previously reported. I'm going to repeat that statement. And remember, get your credit reports ready because this here is the way that you can get your stuff, uh, get negative information removed off your credit reports using the information that I'm about, that, that I am telling you, not about to tell you. So this section also requires furnishers to correct any incomplete or inaccurate information previously reported. So here are the key provisions. 1681S-2A1A prohibits furnishers from reporting information they know is inaccurate. Now, we've seen that uh, problems with that with debt collection companies. We see that with charged off accounts from original creditors, and I'm going to go into how you can correct that. But let's first go through so we can lay the foundation so you have something concrete to lay your disputes on. I'm giving you that concrete information. So the next one, 1681S-2A1B requires furnishers to correct and update information they have reported when they determine it is incomplete or inaccurate. 1681S-2A3 requires furnishers to, to notify the credit reporting agencies when a consumer voluntarily closes an account. You know, before I move forward, this was something where I had um, uh, an account that I closed back when I didn't want credit cards anymore when I was going through my uh, issues with, with debt in the 1990s. And I had closed out a credit card and the credit card provider had placed the information on there as if they closed out the account. Now, this, when it goes to accurate and, and factual, uh, accurate and factual reporting, this is the way that other credit card companies who ran my data were looking at it as, as if the credit card company chose to close it. What do we know about credit card companies? Credit card companies can make a decision based off of what you've done with other credit card providers because these are open-ended accounts. So I, it, for a while, I was not able to get a credit card but solely because of that. And when I looked at my credit reports, I was like, this company here, I closed that credit card. They didn't close that credit card account. So... Again, 1681S-2A3 requires furnishers to notify the credit reporting agencies when a consumer voluntarily closes an account. So we can already see if an account shows that they closed it and you closed it, how could that make you look? And that goes to character on them report, uh, uh, reporting information that is not reflective of your character. 1681S-2A7 requires furnishers to notify Which credit reporting bureaus when a dispute is disputed by the consumer. Mm -hmm. This was another issue that was coming up when, especially during COVID, the credit reporting agencies were not marking on the individual's credit report that, in the, that items were being disputed. They are required and it states it right here. So, Let's, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Right there packaged, I just packaged up some key provisions to the, cre the, to the uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act that you can utilize by analyzing your credit reports and looking at these key provisions in the Fair Credit Reporting Act to uh, dispute information that is on your credit reports uh, using one of those provisions. Now, Let's move forward. Duties and notice of dispute. This part outlines the obligations of furnishers once they receive notice from the credit reporting agencies that a consumer disputes the accurate the accuracy of the information. Here's the key provision on what you need to look out for. 1681S-2B1. After receiving notice of a dispute from the credit reporting uh 
agencies furnishers must conduct a an investigation number two review all relevant information provided by the credit reporting agencies this is where we see a lot of uh, uh, disputes fall short because we some of the times the credit reporting agencies do not forward over the complete dispute to the uh, data furnisher or the collection agency whoever furnished that information on the credit reports that's why we always say you want to send that same dispute directly to the furnisher but you want to also send it to the credit reporting agency because it needs to be marked on there that you are disputing because they have a duty to also mark that on there the credit reporting agencies do uh, the next one is number three Report the results of the investigation to the credit reporting agencies. They must do that within a specified time uh, frame. It's supposed to be 30 days, but we see that they have a leeway of 45 days. And yes, some of the times they go past the 45 days, and you must be willing to do the work to redispute. Uh, just the way that I look at it is that these companies are receiving either thousands or millions of disputes on a week daily it could be weekly depending on uh how big their company is and you know they're limited manpower so some stuff can slip through uh number four if the information is inaccurate report the corrected information to all credit reporting agencies next 1681s2b2 furnishers must complete the investigation within a time frame set by the Fair Credit Reporting Act, typically, and they, uh, and I uh, put that in quotes, uh, highlight that typically 30 days. Now, limitations on liabilities. Consumers cannot bring a private lawsuit for violations of 1681S-2A, but they can bring a suit for violations under 1681S-2A. To B, which applies, which applies once the furnisher has received notice of the dispute from the credit reporting agencies. So once they've received it, if they continue to report it as inaccurate, they have to do something about it. Okay, moving forward, 15 U.S. Code 1681E compliance procedures. This section relates to the responsibilities of credit reporting agencies to ensure that they maintain accurate information while not directly addressing the furnishers. It reinforces the responsibilities of the credit reporting agencies to ensure they follow reasonable procedures to ensure maximum possible accuracy. The problem with, uh, with this uh, compliance procedures is that if the information was received from the furnisher, if that was inaccurate from the beginning, the whole, <laughs> everything that comes after it is inaccurate or incomplete. So now, from experience where I see this issue the most, or I, l let me say it this way, how does it get to be inaccurate information placed on the credit reports and it's not supposed to be there even if you have like direct information like i'm dealing with a client here where a, a debt collector put inaccurate information on her credit reports and this information was decreed in a divorce to go to her husband but this debt collector is still continuing to come after her and put that information on her credit reports the reason why that happens is because they can put information on your credit reports if you do not respond to that initial debt letter that they send you, that Dunning letter that they send you. They can put that information on your credit reports. That's one way. But another way that they can put information on your credit reports is by having a few data points to be able to put that information on your credit reports. A data point is could be your name, address, last four digits of your social security number, it could be your name, last four digits of your social security number, and an account that had the last four digits of that account. It could be a job. It could be your name, address, and a job. It could be a, a few data points that match, and then they could put that information on your credit reports. We've seen this happen a lot where names match, and it was the grandfather or the father, 
had same name similar to the son or grandson and because the data points were similar they were able to put that information on there so i see this uh issue happen a lot with people and but they have a compliance procedure but if the information was inaccurate from the get-go that they got that's going to make a make a lot of problems uh with number one with disputing with the credit reporting agencies because they're going to always come back and say we did our investigation and their investigation is internal and their investigation is based off of the information that was given to them so again that goes into why we want to do this to the furnishers also so now 15 u.s code 1681i procedures in case of disputed accuracy this section outlines the procedures for investigating information disputed by the consumer. The key provision 1681IA1A. If the consumer disputes the accuracy of any item, the, the credit reporting agencies must, dispute, must reinvestigate and correct or delete inaccurate information. This is what uh, most credit reporting, I mean, credit repair companies utilize if they're you know if they know what they're they're doing this is a key provision and uh just j just so you know just because you say this provision in your dispute letter does not mean that the <laughs> credit reporting agencies pay attention to it the information now i'm going to read it again and i'm in and, and, and i hope that you'll pick up on it if not i'm going to explain it 1681 i a 1 a, if a consumer disputes the accuracy of any item, the credit reporting agency must must reinvestigate and correct or delete inaccurate information. So if we break that down, if a consumer disputes the, ac the accuracy of any information, where most people get this wrong is they think, Okay, I'm going to quote the code and you have to follow the code. No, what the code is actually stating, if a consumer disputes the accuracy of any item, what are you disputing about the accuracy of that item? Next, the credit reporting agency must reinvestigate. You must tell them they have a duty to reinvestigate. Number three. They must correct or delete inaccurate information. You must tell them in your dispute, you must correct this information or you must delete this information. So if you look at it, you're notifying, requesting, and you're giving them an outcome that you wish to happen. Next, let's move forward. 1681 IA5. The the credit reporting agency must promptly delete or modify any information that is found to be inaccurate or cannot be verified. So, in summary, so in summary, the key pro the key provisions of the Fair Credit Reporting Act for accuracy of reporting, 1681S-2A, duties of furnishers to provide accurate information and update or correct errors. 1681S-2-B, duty of furnishers to investigate and correct disputed information after receiving notice from the credit reporting agency. 1681EB, credit reporting agencies must follow reasonable procedures to ensure maximum accuracy. 1681i procedures for reinvestigation reinvestigating disputes and correcting inaccurate information so now how does the credit repair shop get charge offs the charge off information that is shown on your credit reports with the original creditors information on there and it, they have sold it to a debt collector this is exactly how we do it don't believe me you just test it we see it the, the results of this all the time uh one of two things can happen they can update it or they can remove it so now here is the foundation if a debt 
if a original creditor, let me back up, if an original creditor has charged off your account, if that original creditor has sold your account to a debt collector, third-party debt collector, right there, right there, you can send out your dispute based on the inaccurate information on your credit report. What is inaccurate about a debt that was sold to an original, I mean, sold to a debt collector? Original creditor sold a debt to a debt collection company. What would be inaccurate? So right now, most people focus on it saying charged off, but there's a problem. And I noticed this when we were sell helping clients settle accounts. When accounts were settled with the original creditor, they did not state that the individual settled the account. It was implied. Uh, they didn't put the person's name on there. They didn't put the amount that was settled for. They didn't say, oh, it was settled. They owed 5000 Uh John Doe settled it for 2000 They didn't put none of that on there. They just put settled for less. So me, with my thinking cap on, I said, okay, it, when I saw accounts that were sold to debt collectors, usually there was a huge problem with the amount that the uh, original creditor would state on there. Like they would say, you know, the person had an account for 5000 They They had it ballooned up with all their fees and all this stuff to eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Right there, there was an issue with the accuracy of the information. But let's just say that they say, well, it was just fees and all of these charges. We, you know, tacked them on there. That's fine and dandy. There's one thing that they cannot overcome and that they accepted payment for that account. Even if your account was in good standing and it was uh, transferred, let, let's just say that you got a, a, a debt consolidation loan and they paid that account in full. They would just, they would not say, uh, that you paid it. They would just say account paid in full. That right there goes to procedures. That goes into what we just stated right here with the accuracy of the reporting by the data furnishers. So all you simply have to do, listen to me. This is all you got to do. You got to craft your letter directly to the original creditor stating that they are not reporting accurately the, the information about the, the charged off account on your credit reports. They will probably send back a letter saying, yes, we are, blah, 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 all of that stuff. If you follow my instructions, they won't send it back like that. They're going to probably try to fight back and forth, or they might go ahead and remove it. It depends on how good you are at crafting a letter. So what you want to do is you want to state to them that this is not a dispute over the charge off per se. It's a dispute over them accepting payment for the charge off and that they need to notate that the, that the account is resolved. It was settled for less now, or they took payment for less. However, they want to put it on there. But they need to mark on there that they accepted payment for that account because they they did accept payment for that account when they sold it to a debt collection company. And you want to do this directly with them and you want to do this to the to the uh, credit reporting agencies. You want to send that letter. Don't be fancy with it. Just point out directly to them. You're going to get one of two results. They're either going to put on there that it was uh, settled for less, but it won't be sitting like it was an unresolved charge off on your uh, credit reports or they will just choose to remove it most of the time what we see them do is they just choose to remove the information off your credit reports now the letter that you got from the new account owner you could use that from that third party debt collector showing that they did accept payment on that account. You can use that letter if you got it from the debt collection company. And you want to attach that to your dispute to the original creditor. You want to attach that to the credit reporting agencies. And then later, you can watch one of my videos on how you can deal with uh, dealing with that debt collection company. So to review, this is, you know, it it it, it, it is not complicated. But what you have to really get good at is the way that you, uh, the wording that you use when you're describing your dispute with the original creditor. 
So, and this is something that we do for our clients every day. So, uh, this really does work. Like I, 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 I wish some of the times I, uh, would just, you know, so I, I have shown letters on these before, but this really does work. So, uh, put, put what you've learned here to work, uh, utilizing the information from the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Get your letters out there. Start cleaning up your credit so you can get to a better place. Uh, if you don't have the time to do it, we always invite you to take a look at working with our company, thecreditrepairshop.com. Go to thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch video of what makes us different so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. That is part of the process that we use to get these uh, charge-offs and collections removed off your credit reports. We work with the credit reporting agencies and with the furnishers and with debt collectors. If you need your credit report scores, go to the website, your the number three scores.com to grab your TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian credit reports and all three scores. If you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three pack of letters, the statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, and cease and desist collection activities letter. Use the one that's appropriate for your specific situation. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel, post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the credit repair shop.com.